Chapter 1491, Going After Easy Prey, After the Crown Prince and Du Anhui exchanged a glance, they suddenly turned around and flitted toward the rear of Yating Court's garden. They moved so rapidly that they were like meteors streaking across the horizon. The man in the metal demon mask was surprised, but then he waved his hand and chased after the crown prince and his party with his 3000 plus black clothed subordinates. Hall master, beware of a trap. The mask track sure princess couldn't resist urging. The northern Mo crown prince has only brought 1000 dragon saliva guards and 2000 royal guards on this trip the man in the metal demon mask sneered. How could those wastrels be our opponent? Pursue them. As he said this, the group of black clothed people dashing madly behind him sped up and passed him like shooting stars. In the light of the setting sun, the crown prince, Du Anhui, Situ Yi, and the group of sect disciples, a little more than a hundred of them, sprinted to the rear of the garden. The crown prince suddenly stopped, Du Anhui and the rest naturally stopped too, and they turned to face off against the group of black clothed people that had encircled them. Mo Lian sized up the man in the metal mask before sniggering all of a sudden. You coward, why don't you remove your mask and let everyone see your true appearance? The man in the metal demon mask cracked a grin and said in a rugged voice, Your Highness the Crown Prince wants to know the reason for your death? How unfortunate it is that you won't have this chance. Mo Lian chuckled. Did I ever mention that overconfident people will die quickly? With a wave of his hand, figures swarmed out from beneath the flowers and trees. Under Yuxu and Hui Feng's lead, more than a thousand dragon saliva guard in royal guards swiftly encircled these black clothed people. With this, the man in the metal demon mask along with his group had become sandwiched in the middle by the enemy. However, he merely gave Mo Lian a taunting sneer. You think that you can defeat us with just these lowly royal guards of the lower star domain? Said you I knew I couldn't resist remarking with a shake of his head. I don't know whether you are inherently self-important or just a fool. You still haven't figured it out. This is a trap laid out for you guys. You guys are dead today. Ha! Huh. What are you wasting your breath on an idiot for? Do it. Liang Qingqing shouted, and her hands suddenly stretched out a meshonette that was as thin as a cicada's wings. At the same time, the hundred disciples from the two sects, along with Du Anhui, Situ Yi, Bailey Zai, and Wein and Feng also produced transparent mesh nets in their hands. Working together, the hundred people took to the air and pulled at the mesh nets in their hands. A net that blotted out the sky dropped down on the black clothed men below. Mo Lian also took to the air, and his fingers continuously struck out over a thousand clusters of purple flames. Once these flames landed on the net, they immediately produced a purple smoke that formed a fire net at once. They abruptly made the black clothed people ensnared within anxiously resist in fright. Right now, they were like easy prey. With a fire net above their heads, retreating would mean getting annihilated by Yuxu and Huey Feng's disciplined royal guards acting in concert. Yet advancing was even worse, since that would mean facing the disciples from the two sects with mystic energy landing on their bodies from across the fire net. It meant either getting roasted to death or getting struck to death by mystic energy. Mo Lian rapidly threw down a dozen purple lotuses, which abruptly exploded among the crowd of black clothed people, causing them bitter misery since they had lumped together. Hash, Chapter 1492, You All Must Die. Moreover, it was strange how the net above their heads could not be destroyed no matter how violently and wantonly the purple flames blazed among the crowd. After a period of surprise and panic, the man in the metal demon mask quickly ordered, Do not shove each other, gather your energy and break through the fire net above our heads. It could be said that his plan was extremely sensible, but unfortunately, that mesh net was extremely pliable and durable. No matter how much they amassed their firepower to knock away a corner, it had no effect. As the man in the metal demon mask watched his black clothed subordinates fall down one after another, with casualties already over 500, his heart could not help but go cold. With his shout, everyone swiftly moved toward Kink's eye while braving the fire net above their heads. However, this movement disrupted his team's formation instead, and it allowed Yuxu and Huey Feng's royal guards to rapidly swarm forth and kill more than 200 people. Meanwhile, 
the Rakshaw princess was hiding in the crowd and did not even dare take a deep breath. She felt that they were going to get completely worn down by the crown prince's forces if things continued like this. I'm leaving it to you Molian was anxious to find his wifey, so he had no time to continue wasting on the man in the metal demon mask and his men. Thereupon, he passed the command off to Juan Yue and them, while he himself rapidly left with a small force. The man in the metal demon mask felt like his lungs were about to explode from anger at this. The northern Mo crown prince was simply disregarding him and his men. What did this mean? This meant that this lofty his highness the crown prince did not treat them as opponents at all. Kill. The demon masked man roared and he directed a group of subordinates to protect him as he continued to retreat toward Kinksai's direction. Since Kinksai was a bamboo grove, he reckoned that this fire net above their heads would also be obstructed by the bamboo after going inside. But he was truly too naive. After five minutes, when he discovered that his party was still being besieged inside the bamboo grove, he couldn't help but panic. Along the way, the enemy had whittled down more than a thousand of his subordinates, so there were only 2,000 black-clothed subordinates remaining. If things continued on like this, wouldn't all his people get whittled away in this yating court sooner or later? Do you knew I couldn't help sniggering at the panicking leader in the demon mask? What, you still think this sky-blotting net of mine is a joke? As I said, you guys must all die here today. Summon your mystic beasts to ward it off. At the demon masked man's order, all mystic cultivators level 10 and above started summoning their mystic beasts. However, there were only a small quantity of great mystic cultivators after all, with only a little more than 200 people out of the 2000 people summoning their mystic beasts. In addition, a portion of them were support type mystic beasts without any battle capability. It was practically a one-sided bloody massacre. This caused the metal demon masked man's eyes to turn bloodshot and he abruptly took out a lustrous and gleaming bead from his pocket sheet. A level 15 mystic energy bead. Situ Yi hollered, and he reached out to stop everyone from charging forward. Everyone retreat backwards. Die. The metal masked man gave a ferocious glare as he injected all the mystic energy in his head into that mystic energy bead. After a loud boom, countless people got knocked out by the mystic energy beads. Discharge and they dropped to the ground with heavy thuds. Hash, chapter 1493, Pursue. As Du R knew I waved away the dense smoke, he gazed frigidly at the humongous crater that had formed in the center. Countless black-clothed people had died in that humongous crater, but the demon-masked man had vanished. He completely disregarded his subordinate slivs in order to escape. Du R knew I curled his lips and scoffed. He remarked with a sigh. You think you can flee from us? Cough. Cough Yuxu covered his face with his sleeve as he waved away the dense smoke in front of him. He ordered sternly, they won't be able to run far. Thirty people to a team. Eliminate all the enemies that have fled to other areas of Yating Court. Everyone responded in unison before systematically departing in teams. Do you are new? I looked up at the hazy sky and then turned to say to Situ Yi. Let's go. We don't need too many people. Let's go confront that half-dead demon masked man. Liang King King hastily followed along. I also want to go see who exactly it is that is trying to play the devil. They even dare to breed and train these disgusting zombies. Ha ha. The outskirts of the Mo Kingdom capital. Inside a pitch black ancient residence. The sky had already turned completely dark, with lightning flashing across it and it looked like a heavy downpour was going to happen at any moment. Kiao Mu did not know how long she had been stuck inside this small room. It made her so irritable that she kept kicking the defensive boundary in front of her. This deed second kin. How come he hadn't died yet from exhausting his mystic energy after trapping her inside this defensive boundary for so long? Creak. The door was pushed open. Kiao Mu's eyes could practically spit raging flames as she stared at the young sir that walked inside. What are you doing? Second young Sir Kin stepped to the side and allowed the maid servants to serve dinner on the short table in front of Kiao Mu. There were only the two of them left inside the room after the door closed shut, and their surroundings instantly turned quiet. As I had said earlier, I only want to have a good talk with you. On the other end, Molian, who was conducting a meticulous search along the lake after bringing people out of Yating Court, 
suddenly halted and took out a green vine segment from his inner world. He squeezed it tightly. There wasn't any response at all. Why? Normally, as long as he was holding this vine segment from the sapling Kukiu in the vicinity of the Mo Kingdom capital, he would be able to contact it. Then, it would bring him into Kyokiao's paradise planet. This situation only meant one thing. Someone had restrained Kyokiao, and her spiritual conscious was most likely also sealed, so even Kyokiao herself could not contact the sapling. When he thought of that, Molian became even more agitated. Just as he planned to go find Juan Yue to think of a plan, he saw Juan Yue, Situ Yi, Liang King King, Wine and Feng and Bailey's eye leaping swiftly toward him. Kyokiya really has gone missing Molian informed them with knitted brows. Let's first go find that demon masked man. I feel that Kyokiya going missing should have some connection to him, Duan Yu stated coldly. However, Situ Yi creased his brows as he raised another possibility. Could it be that someone took advantage of the timing of the demon masked man's attack to kidnap little junior sister? Molian. You said that this organization that created zombies wants to initiate a big catastrophe in the Mo Kingdom capital. Then why did they not cause trouble in the bustling urban district, coming to this remote yating court island in the middle of a lake instead? Wynanfing wobbled his head as he stated, say, could they be targeting the little lady? Let's go Molian felt more apprehensive the more he heard, and he did not want to waste any more time. He took out the messenger jade tablet. The group confirmed their target and pursued him into the Gale Woods. Hash, chapter 1494, it's fake. The demon masked man was not aware that he had already exposed his tracks, and he staggered to the Gale Woods with the Rakshaw princess supporting him by the arm. At this time, the people that had laid low earlier in the Gale Woods showed themselves. They quickly took out the clothes that had been prepared beforehand for the demon masked man to change into. The Rakshaw princess's A's flickered, and she cupped her hands in a bow, saying, We will leave separately. You guys enter the city, while I will first make a trip back to the Rakshaw ghost sect. After saying this, she swiftly departed. Witnessing this. A woman in a white veil couldn't help but grit her teeth and remark, this woman becomes so freaking slippery the moment there's trouble. Forget it, let's enter the city first. The demon mask man had changed into scholar's attire, with a scholar's head covering wrapped around his head. His face looked normal, and it did not have much of an expression either. Just as the group of people exited the woods, they heard the sounds of objects speeding through the air. The scholarly man's expression changed, and he shouted, run. Unfortunately, they had only taken several steps when Molian, Duan Yue, and the rest swiftly surrounded them, blocking off all routes of retreat. Your Excellency the High Priest of Siming Manor, ha ha, it turns out that it really was an acquaintance, Duan Yue snarked. He followed up by tossing the Jade Heavenly Thunder up and down in his hand before suddenly aiming for the other party. He declared with a smile, you had best, not move. Did you capture the crown prince consort? Molian interrogated coldly. If you fess up honestly, I will grant you a quick death. Everyone, is there some kind of misunderstanding? The high priest revealed a faint smile on his scholarly face. The crown prince consort? Uh, our Siming Manor is currently headed for the Mo Kingdom capital. We have not seen the crown prince consort. Stop pretending, all right. We tailed you all the way here. Take out your demon mask. Liang Qingqing put her hands on her hips as she taunted the high priest with a snort. The high priest's frail, scholarly face slowly turned sullen, and his face jerked as he started cackling darkly, I truly have underestimated you young guns. Wai Nanfing brandished his fists and legs as he gave the high priest a mocking smile. So it turns out that it is your excellency the high priest of Siming Manor, one of the famous four great manors. Now can you tell us what organization exactly you are working for? Ah? Uh, tell us, let's chat a bit. However, the high priest merely snorted, and he retreated backwards involuntarily. You people think you can capture me? Just as he said this, Molian's fingers moved, and a fire spirit whip unfurled in the high priest's direction. Meanwhile, Kiao Mu was staring expressionlessly at second young Sirkin through the transparent defensive boundary. Is your natural disposition so cold and detached? No, 
I remember that when I carried you out of that secret room, you had given me a very grateful look. At that time, you were not so indifferent and apathetic like you are right now. Second young Sir Kin propped his chin with one hand as he gazed absent mindedly at the girl in front of him. He seemed to have a lot, a lot, to say to her. That strange dream, he would tentatively refer to it as his previous life. Second young Sir Kin, who had finished walking through this course of his previous life, found that coherent yet unusually sorrowful dream difficult to accept. Kiao Kiao, tell me, is that dream real? You stayed by my side for a full four years. It's fake Kiao Mu gazed at him coldly as she mocked, second young sir, you haven't become so stupid that you can't even distinguish between dream and reality, right? Hash, chapter 1495, Scram, no, I don't believe you. The experience inside the dream was so real. How could it be fake? Ginxin abruptly grabbed Kiao Mu's wrists and asked fervently, Kiao Kiao, say it, say it. Tell me that all this is real, that it's real. You're nuts. Kiao Mu flung away his hands as she glared at him coldly. It's all fake. What for years? What dream? I don't know anything at all. You're lying to me. Your eyes tell me that you are lying to me. I know it Ginxin's eyes stared sharply at Kiao Mu's. He wanted to dig out some kind of other emotion from her callous and apathetic eyes. But yet, there was nothing. He did not get anything at all. The first time I saw you at the Kin Estates entrance, I felt that you were very familiar, and you, I remember, your reaction at the time completely showed that you knew me, correct? Ha Kiao Mu scoffed, and she turned to give him a faint glance. She then said in a tone of extreme ridicule, I gave you several more glances because there was a large heap of nutty women in front of the Kin Estates entrance looking at you. I was merely curious. Don't overthink the other stuff. Liar Kinks enforced this word out through his teeth before he abruptly seized her frail shoulders, shaking her forcefully. You're lying to me. You clearly remember me. Is that right? Is that right? Are you sick? Kiao Mu kicked him hard, but because the defensive boundary was separating them, this kick landed on the barrier instead. This DMN hateful man. His hands could pass through the defensive boundary and seize her at any time, while any attack of hers got blocked by the defensive boundary. So utterly hateful. Let go. This nightmarish man actually remembered everything from her previous life. Were you kidding her? How could this be? She had been reborn but not this man. On what basis could he remember those past events that had caused her unbearable agony? On what basis? Scram. Kiao Mu kicked the defensive boundary fiercely again, fiery rage spitting from her eyes. Why was this person so annoying? On what basis was he grabbing her shoulders familiarly and not letting go? Disgusting. Kiao Mu used all her might to push second young Sir Kin's hands away. She kicked at him but it got rebounded by the defensive boundary. She could only patter several steps backwards, slumping onto the square stool behind her. You just loathe me so? The second young sir stared at her coldly as a self-mocking smile surfaced on his lips. But do you know, how much I like you? The moment Kiao Mu heard the word like, her whole body shook, as if she had been bit by some venomous snake. She reflexively shrunk backwards. She looked up guardedly at the second young sir, her eyes filled with vigilance and distaste. Scram away from me. Never say the word like to me. Do not like me, or else you will not be able to handle the consequences. Kiao Mu looked at him coldly. It was as if hearing the word like from this person's mouth was that freakish and unthinkable. Why? Why can't I say like? In the dream. You were clearly looking at me with a fond gaze. Bullshit, was it really good to be so egocentric? Hash, chapter 1496, was once her redeemer, that was because at the beginning, it was him, this elegant and calm man, who had pulled her out of hell. She was grateful for this. At that time, she had clutched him tightly like he was a fleeting light. She wanted to rely on this person. She thought that, he was a good person. Yet, she ended up making a disgraceful joke out of herself. Kiao Mu's eyes were deep and bitingly cold. They did not possess any trace of warmth when looking at this person in front of her. However, this gaze seemed to have triggered this person, making him laugh all of a sudden. You didn't? You really didn't? Kiao Mu's pupils contracted, and she anxiously interrupted him, 
as if he was going to say some terrifying words if he were to continue, shut up, why aren't you letting me continue, what are you scared of, hark ye our mute tossed him a mocking glance, I just don't want to continue listening to you wasting your breath, ye o kiao, in the dream, you were clearly moved by me, Second young Sir Kin declared with certainty, Kiao Mu merely looked at him in ridicule, you're being egocentric, in the dream, what dream, can you truly treat everything that happened in the dream as real? Kiao Mu did not want to continue bickering with him, the present was no longer her previous life, she could only say that this person was too annoying for insisting on getting tied up with the past, besides, did anyone know her own feelings better than her, she had never liked him in her previous nor in the present life, instead of saying like, it was rather, she had once viewed him as her redeemer, it had to be known that she was in such despair back then, and this person suddenly descended by her side like an angel and rescued her from hell on earth, yet that person only treated her as a little pet, he would pet her head when he liked her, or he could mercilessly starve her for three days and three nights when he didn't, in order to tame this disobedient little pet, he could toss her aside for many days and let her live or perish on her own without showing the least bit of concern, he made her wiggle her head in the darkness like a worm, she was so filthy and lowly that she practically couldn't believe that that, was her past, this cold blooded and heartless man suddenly said that he liked her just because of that so called dream of his previous life, ha ha, didn't he feel that this desecrated the word like, like meant treating you as a pet, like meant wanting to become your master, like meant being able to bully and humiliate you willfully, taming you to be obedient, ha, whoever wanted this kind of like could go take it, she, Kiao Mu, dared not accept it, in her previous life, when this unfeeling man discovered that even starving her for several days and nights was unable to tame her, he abruptly changed his attitude toward her, she had no idea whether it was because he had short circuited or because he was pricked by his conscience, but what was the use, at that time, she had long been thoroughly defeated by her life that had been deprived of dignity, the her at that time had long lost heart, she had personally let go of this man she had once viewed as her redeemer and no longer felt anything toward him, it was useless even when he doted on and groomed her like a darling afterwards, treating her as affectionately and as perfect as could be, she simply did not want to listen, see, or even ask about any of his affairs, even if she did hear or see anything, she would choose to selectively forget about it, when she met him again in this life, she could not even remember his surname, in Kiao Mu's eyes, this second young sir in front of her was probably a bit crazy, I had let go of you long ago Kiao Mu's chilling sentence stabbed fiercely into the second young sir's heart like a sharp arrow, hash, chapter 1497, eliminate your inner demon, had let go of him long ago, second kin's pupils contracted, and he stared fixedly at the little lady in front of him with an uncanny look, for some reason at this moment, he especially wanted to grab her, no, he wanted to hug her, tightly hug this frosty and cold hearted little lady, he did not, want, to, let, go, he just wanted to be willful for once and not let go, bam, seeing that his hands were about to grab her again, Kiao Mu kicked him away with all her might and dodged to the side, not liking meant not liking, why did he have to keep pestering her, besides, pestering her was useless anyways, she should have long tossed away those unhappy past memories, no, these miscellaneous people of no consequence could not stir up her heartstrings, she could not let this person drag her into the abyss again, she could not limit herself to her past nightmare, she needed to break free, she needed to emerge from the cocoon and be mentally reborn, otherwise, this would be completely unbeneficial to her future cultivation journey, this is the correct way to think, kill him, killing this person in front of you will allow you to exterminate your inner demon forever, the broad and right path is right before you a cold voice suddenly popped up in her conscious pool, it was chilly, like a heap of snow cascading from the peak of a lofty mountain, peach blossoms fluttered as a tall and slender figure in crimson suddenly appeared beside her, it was so sudden that it made second kingdom founded at the venerable peach blossom immortal's abrupt appearance, bang, however, something that astounded him even more happened in the next second, that defensive boundary encircling Kiao Mu was actually smashed in one strike by the man in red who had suddenly appeared, the backlash overwhelmed him, 
causing second young Sir Kin to spit out blood from getting caught off guard. You are not from this star domain Kin Xin's eyes instantly turned extremely icy while looking at this man who had upset the situation with his sudden appearance. Kiao Kiao, do not hesitate and be soft hearted. Take this opportunity right now to slaughter your inner demon. The venerable peach blossom immortal raised his hand, and countless brambles formed from wood spirit shot out from his fingers, zigzagging toward him. Ginxin was not surprised at this development. After all, it was not that strange for an unknown expert who was not from Psychon planet to be able to use wood spiritual energy. He swiftly struck out his palm and a lightning bolt descended on the brambles. He had originally thought that this lightning could ward off the brambles somewhat, but he was wrong. This red-clothed man who had popped out from who knows where actually possessed much higher cultivation than him. The brambles directly passed through the lightning and entwined his limbs, binding him tightly. With a pull of the bramble, second young Sirkin got jerked up into midair, where he stared extremely frigidly at that smiling red-clothed man. Do you know what kind of price you have to pay for doing this? This man had utilized the paramount sacred power in the lower star domain. Even though it was only a little bit, it was enough to incur heavenly law's wrath. The venerable beech blossom immortal shrugged his shoulders with a grin, and he turned to look at the little lady who had stiffened while clenching her fists. Kiao Kiao, kill him quickly. What are you hesitating for? The venerable beech blossom immortal zipped to her side. With a wave of his fingers, even more brambles coiled around Kinxin's body like venomous snakes. Take this opportunity now to get rid of your inner demon. Hash, chapter 1498, farewell, my nightmare. Kiao Mu subconsciously bit her small lips, and her petite face paled until it was as white as snow. When Kiao Mu heard the venerable beech blossom immortal's words again, she drew out a transparent and glistening bow formed from ice crystals with one hand. That large bow formed from ice crystals spun above her fair and petite hand. Slowly, a snow white arrow took shape in her other hand, and she abruptly knocked it on the large bow, aiming it straight for second young Sir Kin's chest. You really want to kill me? Second young Sir Kin closed his eyes painfully. That's right. I had owed you in my previous life. I have no complaints if you want me to pay you back in this life. Xiao Kiao, in this world, only you can let me die of my own will. Since you want me to die, then I will go die. What am I afraid of? I am that fearless death will only allow me to approach you even closer. Kiao Mu's hand trembled as she held the bow. The venerable beech blossom immortal's apathetic voice suddenly rang out by her ear. Kiao Kiao. Don't hesitate. If you don't eliminate your inner demon, then how will you mature in the future? Quickly do it. Muster up your greatest courage in this life. Right. She was going to kill him. She could not let him approach her life again. She could not let him end up as her inner demon. She could not let him have the chance to approach her. Whether it be Kinxin or Fan Kaiyu, she would eradicate the nightmares from her previous life one by one with her own hands. Farewell. My nightmare from this life. Never think of troubling me in the slightest. You no longer have value for existing. Kiao Mu's eyes were replaced by a chilly resoluteness. With a twang, the arrow pierced through the air and shot for Kin Xin's heart. At that instant, her icy eyes settled on his smiling face. She could not describe what she was feeling in her heart. Ease of mind? Yes. Letting off her pent-up feelings? There was also some of that too. But most of it was perhaps merely getting exonerated. It was an indescribable joy that came from absolving herself from the nightmare of her previous life. She, Kiao Mu, would no longer be troubled by this nightmare. She should walk out from it. Kiao Kiao Kin Xin called out softly. The last sight she had of him was that handsome yet bleak face beneath his loose black hair. Kiao Mu's eyes widened abruptly, boom. She watched as the second young Sir Kin in front of her suddenly shattered into pieces like a pile of star fragments. Kiao Mu couldn't resist creasing her brow. This shattering situation didn't seem quite right. Why did a person shatter into pieces like a soul fragment? Before she could ponder it over carefully, a large, warm palm stroked her head gently. Good girl. You did great. When you are faced with a more serious impasse or predicament in the future, you can remember that you are someone who could eradicate your inner demon with your own hands. You are fearless. Kiao Mu turned to look at him, and suddenly, 
She clutched his sleeve with a changed expression. What's happening to you? I have to leave the venerable peach blossom immortal was remorseful as he glanced at the formless chains wrapping around his limbs. When he was unable to fling them off after attempting to do so, he couldn't help but roll his eyes at the sky. Fine, I'll go myself. You don't have to string me along with so many heavenly law chains, all right? Go where? Kiao Mu grabbed his sleeve in slight panic. Hey! I'm going to a fun place. Don't worry. When you want to summon me again, I will appear. Hash. Chapter 1499. I won't. It's just that the venerable Beach Blossom Immortal tilted his head as he added with an awkward smile, if I don't respond even after a long time, then that will mean I haven't left that place yet. What place exactly are you going to? Kiao Mu pulled hard on his sleeve as her eyes grew round. Is the danger? Is it like what Kink Sin said earlier, that heavenly law is targeting you because you used a special ability? Go hide in our paradise planet. That's right, if I hide in paradise planet, would heavenly law still be able to find me? Yet the moment the venerable peach blossom immortal finished saying this, the dozen heavenly law chains around his body abruptly turned into fifty or sixty chains. It mercilessly dragged him out of the courtyard, making him trip. Fook, can you not be so violent, heavenly law? It's not like I'm not going. Just let me drink several more jugs of quality wine before going. How many years has it been since I ate meat and drank wine? What kind of pleasures of life are the cultivating every day in that hellishly vast expanse of white? It's better to fook. The heavenly law chains around his limbs suddenly became several hundred and dragged the venerable beech blossom immortal outside to the entrance. On the other hand, Kiao Mu was latching on firmly to his arm. She felt like her body was getting attacked by countless blades, and it hurt awfully. The venerable Beach Blossom Immortal's gaze suddenly shifted, and he attempted to pull his arm out from her hands. Little fellow, quickly let go. You little lass, you think you can stop heavenly law? Quickly let go. I won't. How could she look on unfeelingly as someone who had helped her multiple times got dragged away by the DMN heavenly law to who knows where? Silly lass, what can happen to me? The venerable Beach Blossom Immortal helplessly gazed down at her while getting yanked backwards by numerous heavenly law chains. It really is nothing. It's just making a trip through the punishment area. I had often gone to that place in the past. Big liar. This punishment area. Just the sound of it did not sound like a good place. The venerable Beach Blossom Immortal, who had successfully been promoted to become a big liar, helplessly reached out with his hands, but they were tied by the heavenly law chains. He was simply unable to budge at all, so he could not even stroke her petite head to comfort her. Slightly remorseful, the venerable Beach Blossom Immortal stated, My name is not Big Liar. My name is Feng Chen, remember it. Also, the cultivation level of your inner demon's physical body is actually almost the same as mine. You have to be careful when you go to the upper three provinces later on. Peach Blossom? The little fellow lunged, grasping onto a portion of his sleeve. The venerable Peach Blossom immortal twitched his mouth exasperatedly. I said my name isn't Peach Blossom. Call me Feng Chen. This child really was a senseless scal. Why was she so worrisome? The next second, an open black gate suddenly appeared behind the venerable immortal. It was not possible to see the end of this deep passageway. Merely taking a glimpse made Kiao Mu feel as if the sky and earth were spinning, and she got struck flying by a tremendous force. Heavenly law, what did you hurtle her down for? If this makes her soul unstable, I won't let you off the venerable beach blossom immortal let out a furious shout. But the instant the black gate slammed shut, both he and his voice had disappeared without a trace. Rotten Peach Blossom Just as Kiao Mu was about to lunge forward again, she crashed into a solid wall. When she looked up, she discovered that the giant ape had suddenly blocked in front of her. This caused her head to crash into the giant ape's fat belly, making her tear up from the pain. Hash. Chapter 1500 Punishment Area the rotten peach blossom had been dragged to somewhere she didn't know. What should she do? She felt a bit panicked for some reason. When she suddenly heard the words punishment area, she felt like they sounded inexplicably familiar. It was like she had heard someone mention them before. Kyukyu. Meanwhile, Kyukyu, who was trying his hardest to play dead, did not respond. Kyukyu, master. 
the little tree and bounced out from Paradise Planet and scampered up onto her left shoulder. He pointed his small branch arms at each other as he replied with a lowered head, Master, what do you want to know? Kukiu will certainly disclose everything without reservation. Is there really no danger in that punishment area that the rotten beech blossom mentioned? Ah, uh, that. That is what heavenly law does to punish. Ah, uh, what are you ewing for? Hurry and tell me. Those us were obviously his attempt to swindle her with some kind of cooked up explanation. He was still wanting to keep her in the dark at this kind of time. Simply outrageous. The little tree and raised his small head pitifully and dared not hide it from his little master who was on the verge of going berserk. He quickly explained, it hits like this, ma ma master, that, because people in the divine realm and above are all extremely powerful, Heavenly law cannot recklessly obliterate them. Th that's why, heavenly law specially set up a 17 level punishment tower, cough, to suck in disobedient people such as the venerable beech blossom immortal in the divine realm and above, it is only to give them a round of discipline. I in reality, it it's not very dangerous. I it's just a bit troublesome. Kiao Mu turned to glare at the sapling. Pre previously when the venerable immortal was staying in our paradise planet the entire time, heavenly law could do nothing about him. Th that's why, when the venerable immortal utilized sacred power this time, tha that heavenly law could not tolerate it anymore, so it dragged him to the punishment area. It it's fine, little master. Just just imagine that punishment area, too, to be a year. You don't need to imagine anything. It is just a tower with 17 levels. The venerable immortal can come out as long as he makes his way through this 17 level tower. Then what if he can't make it through? Kiao Mu glared at the sapling Kukiu with her bright eyes when she asked this. If he can't make it through then he'll get locked up for around a hundred years. The sapling muttered to himself. What? Kiao Mu's eyes turned as round as saucers. Don't get agitated, little master. Don't get agitated. Don't worry. It is definitely not this venerable immortal's first time going inside. Look at how he was acting earlier. Ah, he was treating it with such indifference, so fleetingly unrestrained, right? He obviously wasn't afraid at all the sapling rambled, just view that punishment tower as an alternate residence for cultivation. It's actually quite nice, since it can make people rapidly raise their cultivation, right? Then how about Molian? Eh, uh, you have even less reason to worry about his highness the crown prince. He will definitely be able to come out after going inside. At the worst, would heavenly law not release him after he dawdles inside for a hundred years? It was only after running his mouth off that the sapling Kukiu suddenly realized what he had divulged. After promptly widening his black beady eyes and meeting his little master's arm and eyes, he frantically slapped its mouth with the branch. A hundred years. Question mark darling. Kiao's voice shook as her eyes also turned red. She looked like she was on the verge of bawling. After his little master swindled the truth out of him, he immediately slapped his mouth again and muttered, Who told you to talk nonsense? Talk nonsense. Master, don't worry. There is no doubt that nothing will happen to his highness the crown prince. Hash.